Professor Anthony Hewish from Cambridge University discovered there was life beyond the grave for dead stars when he built an unusual telescope in the 1960s. We started building in 1965. The thing was we wanted a large radio telescope uh, which was very sensitive but it had to be rather cheap and uh, I decided on this uh, construction of di a big dipole array. We all took our turns in hammering the posts into the ground and uh, hanging up the wires and putting into the cables. It was just very much a team effort. Over the next two years, Hewish and a small team of students built a jumble of wires and poles spread over a four-acre site. This strange-looking telescope was to discover the weirdest object in the universe and win Hewish the Nobel Prize. The task of running it was the responsibility of then-research student Jocelyn Bell. was producing miles of chart paper, 96 feet of chart paper every day. And we kept scanning the sky over and over and over again. I ran it for six months and generated several miles of chart paper. In August 1967, after just one month of operation, an unusual signal caught her eye. As the pen ran over the chart paper, it went beep, 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 beep. Regular pulses, about one and one third seconds apart. It looks so artificial. It looks like an intelligent signal to begin with. And intelligent signals coming from, from outer space, what are they? Well, you make a joke and say, perhaps somebody's talking to us in some kind of a code. So we call these things little green men, LGM. I mean, we didn't really believe it. On the other hand, it was a possibility you couldn't immediately ignore. After months of analysis, Hewish and Bell came to an outstanding conclusion. Only a small, super-dense spinning object could be creating such a fast pulse. The only possibility was the collapsed core of a supernova a neutron star. Here was the living corpse. I really didn't know neutron stars existed until I started talking to people and said, look, can you tell me any sort of star that's, that's smaller than a thousand kilometers? And uh, up came the answer, neutron stars, and maybe we're seeing the first one of them. The pulses that come from one of these neutron stars come to us because, like a lighthouse, these stars are spinning, and they have a beam that's focused by the magnetic field of the star. And every time the beam sweeps across us, or across our radio telescope, we pick up a pulse. But for one year, there were literally hundreds of theories being published, and it was an absolutely open question. And um, I think it only became generally accepted after about 12 months that it, that it had to be a neutron star. The revelation triggered a wave of activity. Radio telescopes all over the world scanned the heavens looking for the mysterious pulses. Less than a year later, the giant Arecibo dish in Puerto Rico picked up a signal. It was coming from the heart of the Crab Nebula. They had found the ticking corpse at the center of the Chinese supernova. The spinning neutron star was not only giving off radio waves, 
amazingly, it was also visible. High-speed television pictures revealed it was flashing on and off 30 times a second. It was the most powerful object that anyone had ever photographed. Neutron stars are like nothing else in the universe. They're so dense, a thimbleful would weigh over a hundred million tons. Supposing you somehow manage to land on a neutron star, then you are experiencing phenomenal gravity. And the atmosphere, instead of being five miles thick, is about um, five millimeters thick. So if you stood on the neutron star, the atmosphere would be sloshing around between your toes. But even a neutron star's phenomenal gravity is surpassed when a real super heavyweight star dies. When a star a hundred times heavier than our sun switches off, it goes with a bang. While we see the outward explosion as a supernova, this masks the inward implosion. The core is collapsing into the most dangerous object in the universe. The density becomes so great in the center that gravity sucks in time and space itself from the outside universe. A darkness forms at the heart of the collapsing star. A black hole is born. If you have a massive star, once the massive star has exhausted its nuclear fuel, uh, which is keeping it hot and keeping it puffed up, gravity becomes so strong that it just overwhelms all pressure the material can uh, provide, and uh, the star goes imploding inward, you know, and it's gone, forming a black hole. Everyone has heard of black holes. No one has seen them or been near one. At the center of a black hole is a point called the singularity. Everything that has ever fallen into a black hole is destroyed, crushed into a pinpoint of infinite density and infinite smallness. Even space and time are squelched out of existence. The singularity is a place where gravity is essentially infinitely strong. It's a place where uh, matter gets destroyed. It's a place where space and time as we know them get destroyed. At some time in the future, a spaceship from Earth will be sent into the jaws of the most elusive object in the universe. A spacecraft traveling towards a black hole wouldn't see the singularity hidden deep inside. It would only see the blackness around it.